Hi, I'm Vic with Brouhaha Beer Review, and this is Pete, the uh, CEO and founder of Brouhaha Comedy Tours. Today we are going to let Pete tell us what we are drinking and uh, try it out and give you our honest opinion on uh, on what it what, what, what we think of it and whether you should drink it. Alright guys, so here's our, our beer today. This is by uh, Hardy Wood up here in Richmond, Virginia. Great brewery up there. I've yet to take Vic up there, but we'll go there soon, probably this week. Those are the guys we met in Florida. Yeah, we did. Actually, it was ironically enough, Vic and I were in Florida in uh, beginning of February prospecting for bringing our, uh, our tour down to you guys. And um, Hardywood Brewery guys were down there. It was pretty awesome. A Tampa Bay Brewing Company. So um, this beer actually is called the Hardywood Virginia Blackberry. I've always wanted to try this beer. And uh, it's a Belgian-style white ale with fresh Virginia blackberries. So this is actually sourced from a, a local farm up there. All right. So I'm going to give this, these guys a shot. As always, I'll be the good host. And uh, poor Vic is here first. While Pete's doing this, I want to take a couple seconds to uh, talk about the week that we've had. Um, today we're not going to be doing a lot of joking around. We're not going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of jokes and, and, and silly humor because uh, it, it's been a tough week. This week we lost one of our headliners and quite honestly one of my favorite comics, but also a very close friend of mine, Sean Michael Malik. Um, he, was an, he, he was a star. Um, that had just not been quite discovered fully just yet, and uh, he will be sorely missed. So, so uh, good, bad, or indifferent, whether we like this, whether I like this beer or not, or whether we like this beer or not, um, this one's dedicated to Sean. Um, sorry, it's not a gin and tonic, Sean. Sorry, it's uh, not a gin and tonic, buddy. Uh, I can't stomach those. Yeah, I don't think they can either. So, but uh, we love you, Sean. Um, happy journeys. And uh, this is for you, buddy. Not bad. It's not terrible. No, no, no. A little tartness. You can taste it. I can taste the blackberry in it. I can sure. taste the blackberry, definitely. Yeah. They, they rate it as a 6.8% ABV, guys. It's their 2014 release. This is part of their reserve series beers, so they do a lot of different reserve series throughout the year. Um, one of their reserve series, which we debating if we're going to review it during the spring and summer months, but I've got that gingerbread stout, which was hugely popular every year. Um, we may let that age a little bit longer, uh, but that's a good beer. That's part of their reserve series. Um, this is actually, the berries here are actually grown. They say, according to the label here, I'm just give you guys a quick little. Um, has a touch of rye and a massive addition, over a thousand pounds per 40 barrel batch of plump ripe blackberries. For grown up there in Hanover County, which is up in Richmond, so that's that's pretty. That's a lot. Local Virginia blueberries for a local Virginia blueberry or blackberry. You know what I meant. Um, berries, berry, berry. Um, the way it came locally, came from came from here. They're they're not the first brewery to go with local. I mean, you've got um, no O'Connor's. Um, not O'Connor's. Uh, the Big Ugly, the Big Ugly, um, did does something. We're going to be reviewing one of their beers, Chesapeake, um, on the next on one of the next episodes, and uh, they do something really cool. Not to uh, not to not to give it away, but the used um, hops mm -hmm. from their brewing process they give to local farmers for their cows, and their cows love them. Um, not the so first brewery to do that. I'll give you that. that it's head, it's a fully. But the fact that they're doing it is very nice. Right. Most most of give me a hands up, not to be the uh, the jackass here. Okay. But um, most local breweries actually do that. It's a way kind of making everything rotate. Uh, Brothers Brewing Company or Brothers Craft Brewing does it for the okay. local farmers. St. George here. Do you really want to bust out the ones locally that don't though? No, because I'm pretty sure that pretty much all of them do. No, they don't. So because I got listed, which ones don't? No, really. Yeah. So. No. That's a lot of I mean. them do. To those that do, and to the big Cheers. ugly, thanks for staying green. We'll edit this whole part out. <laughs> right. But hey, what, um, since you're going to edit all that part out, one other good thing I'll say with Chesapeake, um, uh, big ugly they're doing, and they're actually the only microbrewery here in Hampton Rose that are doing this. They're making their own root beer. Otter root beer, I believe is the name of it. 
Um, which was delicious. Which, you know, was very good. Um, I, the only other breweries that I know in Virginia that actually do their own uh, root beer, which is surprisingly, they even made the comment that they're surprised no other brewery actually does it. Uh, besides them, Lost Rhino and up in um, Ashland does it. They're way, way, way close to the D.C. area. And then the closest one beyond um, us here in Virginia would be uh, this wonderful brewery in North Carolina. I, I unfortunately was not able to try their root beer and we weren't able to evaluate it. Uh, but Weeping Radish makes a great root beer. Bottled in 22 ounce bottles. Wouldn't you agree there, Vic? You told me I could have it. <laughs> he told me I could have it, so I drank it, and then he wants to get mad at me for drinking it. I wanted to review it, so y'all... We, we're beer, we're, we're beer view, not not root beer view. Well, beer is in the name of root. It's the root of all evil. Root, beer, beer, root. <laughs> And sometimes these things are just not going to go the way we want them to go because <laughs> of whatever reason. Do you what? like that beer? It's actually not bad. It's, it's, a, it's a light beer. It's got a little... A little sour. You think it's sour? I don't know. I don't Tart or something? I don't know. But I, I wouldn't say sour because sour is a different... These guys don't do sour beers. Very weedy. It is weedy, weedy with the tartness. Blackberry is a tart mm -hmm. fruit. So I can see the tartness in it, but not necessarily the, uh, you know. Lucky, I almost opened you up to the raspberry cider first and then this. It's good beer though, I mean, it's not bad. I think I think it's definitely a um, late spring, early summer type beer. But they released yeah, it's, it. this is not a good beer. If it's 110 degrees outside, do not drink this beer. Which is ironic because they actually say it's a good beer for the summer. I would, this is a little heavy. This, was, this was, was actually released over the winter time. Yeah. So, I mean, you can tell by the, by the clarity that this is not a truly 110 degree summer day beer. Right. This is, this is not. We've had some decent beers that were. That the watermelon water beer water was, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. If I actually cook grass for a little bit, I'd love to drink that one. Well. Mm. But. As you guys could tell, we're not exactly in the greatest of <laughs> mood. Um, and I think it's important that you guys see that, that not everything is a... Uh, Hunky Dory? Hunky Dory. Well, no, no, that. that's fine. I'm saying, you're saying, um, oh, just yeah. like with everything, when you experience tragedy and loss and everything, sometimes yeah. you just gotta, you know, as, especially when I want to tell my my fellow comics out there, you gotta feel it, you gotta work through it, you gotta own it. You know, as a as a comedian, and you saw it firsthand, right. our initial reaction when we deal with pain and tragedy is to make a joke about it. Um, some good and some bad, apparently. Yeah, not healthy, yeah. not healthy, um, but reality. Um, comedians are very emotionally disturbed people sometimes. Um, and that's just because we don't process things the same. We don't, when tragedy and pain hit, we just, we tend to make light of it and compartmentalize it and push it down. and and not really deal with it. So I would encourage everyone in the uh, comedy world, especially my family here in Hampton Roads, comedy family um, that, that we're a part of, uh, deal with this, man. Don't, don't, don't push it down. Don't, don't kill it. Um, come and drink some beer with us and uh, we'll deal with it and we'll sit around and make a big circle and cry it out. We have no problem with, well, he does. He doesn't show emotion all that great, but I do. I'm emotional. So, um, um, yeah, we'll let the editors chop, let's switch up all that up and, uh, pick out the, the Chicago thing on this one or go uh, do a different one? The Chicago thing? Yeah. Oh, the lady who caught a ball in her beer? Yeah. Fuck yeah! So, um, on, on a positive note, on a positive note, let me go forward. I actually snapped a photo of this. This was really cool. So, there was this. 
there was an article on Facebook and Chicago Sun Times actually posted this as well. There was a woman at a Cubs game recently that actually there was a foul ball hit by somebody. I, I, I honestly don't know who was at bat, um, but it's a Cubs, so you know who cares. Uh, pretty much all foul balls and all strikes. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. Uh, but anyway, she actually caught her caught the ball, the foul ball in her beer cup, and then proceeded to drink the beer. Cause I actually have that on camera of her catching it and then drinking the beer. So uh, a little shout out. I know she probably will never see this, but if you ever actually do, we get viral enough up to your area. Her name is Krista Dotsenrod or Dotsenrod, D-O-T-Z-E-N-R-O-D from Minnesota. If you see this video. And we did tag you on this one. Send us your t-shirt size. We're going to send you a Brewha uh, t-shirt right away. Any woman that catches a baseball with her glass of beer and then drinks it. First off, I'm still single. <laughs> Hit me up. But second of all, you need to send them a, right. a freaking shirt. And it was actually a dark beer. So you can tell it wasn't a, um, a watery influenced beer. So she didn't want to waste her beer. So that's even more kudos. Right. To actually, you know. So in other words, we love you. And uh, you're getting a t-shirt, so congratulations. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. All right, well, what do you think? Good, bad, scale of one to five. What are you going to give it? For the series of beer that it is, because we've never done a scale before. I know. Okay. Yeah. We're starting a scale. One star is drink at your own risk. Zero stars is don't drink this, it's shit. However, one star is drink at your own risk. Neither of us like it, and we're on two ends of the spectrum yeah. as far as what we like. Five stars is you better go get this because it's awesome. And then three stars is you got to pick which one of us that you think represents the, the taste buds that, that you kind of go with and, mm -hmm. and you know figure it out for yourself. But what would you give this, one through, uh, one through five? Or zero, obviously not no, zero. I, 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 I can't think of many beers I put in the zero category. Okay. I know you can because you don't like certain series. Yeah. Um, for the light beer, the Belgian style that it is, I'd probably do about between a three and a half and three point seven five. Okay. Not and five. a uh, one through five on. Just definitely, you got to go get this beer. I thought that was the scale I just gave. No, you just compared it on Belgian style light beers. Well, my my rating is between three and a half and three point seven. All right. All, all together. I'm going to give it the old 2.5. The reason I'm going with 2.5 is if you're thirsty, it would taste better. Um, however, the fact that I'm able to drink it um, and it's the type of beer that it is drink actually it. says yeah. a lot about it. Um, it's not a bad beer, so I'm going to give it the 2.5. So you're going three and a half. I'm going two and a half. Cheers. Cheers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is webisode whatever in the can.